Our quote for today is, the worst part of quarantine was all the wasted good hair days. Well, it is a Wednesday during this year of St. Joseph. I'd like to, on occasion, talk about some of the titles in the litany of St. Joseph. And the one I'd like to focus on today is St. Joseph the Worker, the Model of Artisans. And one of the quotes, one of the phrases in the litany of St. Joseph, Model of Artisans. It says in scripture that St. Joseph was a carpenter. Now the word carpenter in the Greek is tekton. And it's an interesting word because you get the word architecture from that word. You get the word technology from that word. And a carpenter was much more than someone who worked with wood in the Lord's days, especially because in the Holy Land, there's not a lot of trees. If you've been there, it's not a lot of trees, unlike the Northwest of our own country. So carpenters would do a lot of work with stone. And so they were really also stonemasons, probably they maybe even worked more with stone than they did with wood. Now, certainly St. Joseph worked with wood. He would have made you know, tables and chairs, would have made roofs or fixed roofs. He would have made plows and he would have made yokes, which are the, the wooden beams that go over the oxen's shoulders. And maybe even over St. Joseph's carpenter shop, it said, my yokes fit well, perhaps. My yokes fit well. And, but they would have also been, um, so carpenters had to be very strong. They were like lumberjacks. They had to go out and cut down their own trees and drag them and then make them, uh, be able to make things with those trees that they had cut down. But again, because there were not a lot of trees, they would have done a lot of work with stone. And so we think of how strong St. Joseph must have been to be as strong as a lumberjack, but also as strong as a stonemason. But the word tecton also refers to being a craftsman, that he wasn't just a, like a generic carpenter, he was a craftsman. And think of the house that St. Joseph would have built for the Blessed Mother and himself because that's why it took one year from the time of betrothal to the time of the actual wedding, formal wedding ceremony when you brought the bride into the home. It took one year to build the house. And so think of the house that St. Joseph would have built for the Blessed Mother. In fact, you can go visit that house. It's now in Italy, believe it or not. It's called the Holy House of Loretto, which was transported by either angels or by the, the D'Angelo family, we don't know, but somehow the house of Nazareth that Joseph had built is now in Loretto, Italy. I've had the privilege of going there, saying mass there. And the materials, the wood, the other materials, the dirt, obviously originates in the Holy Land. It's really a unique thing. Look that up sometime, the Holy House of Loretto. So we think of St. Joseph today as the patron saint of workers and the model of artisans. We just celebrated the feast day of St. Joseph the Worker just a few days ago. That feast day was established by Pope Pius XII, May 1st, 1955, when a group of thousands of Italian workers came to the Vatican to have the Pope you know, bless them. And they, these workers um, proclaimed their loyalty to the social teachings of the church and to the dignity of human labor. And so the Pope was very smart. He wanted to sanctify and in a sense baptize May Day, which was the communist day of the worker. International day of the worker was May 1st. So as the church often sanctifies secular things or baptizes in a sense secular things, the Pope said, yes, May 1st, the day of the worker, which was the communist focus, we will now elevate that to something more holy, something sanctifying called the feast day of St. Joseph the worker. So that's what we honor every May 1st, that work is something that is dignifying. God himself created, and he, when he created the universe, and then Adam and Eve were told to tend the garden. So work is something good, something holy, and something sanctifying. Now, of course, after the fall, it became a penance for a lot of people, too, because of the thorns and thistles and working by the sweat of one's brow. But work is something that 
the theology of work, that we can unite our work with the Lord, with God, with St. Joseph, and offer it up in reparation for the sins of the world. We can offer it up as something transforming, dignifying, and sanctifying. So think about that today on this Wednesday during the year of St. Joseph. Think about the work that you do. Even if you're retired, many of you do many hours of volunteer work at the church or visiting others or taking care of your grandkids or maybe some of you are teachers or teach religious ed. That is all beautiful, creative work. Even cooking an amazing meal for your family. That is, you're an artisan if you do that. When you uh, help out with your family or your kids, whatever it might be, offer it up. Try to do it to the very best of your ability because you're participating in this creativity and ask St. Joseph to intercede for you. So we pray today, St. Joseph, patron saint of workers, St. Joseph, model of artisans, pray for us.